Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Friday night, September 19th, 2025. It's 929 here, local time in the PM along the West Coast here in California. Latest activity shows a, uh, looks like a five-pointer up there across the Kamchatka, Russia area again. Goodness, talk about, talk about a lot of earthquake activity. This is crazy amount of movement that's happening out here. Uh, in this region in the last couple months, literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of large events, including the 8.8 .8 and a couple mid sevens and the more recent upper 7.8. So here in the last 24 hours, let's take a look here and see what we've got. The 7.8 there from yesterday, obviously off the map, um, two 5.9s this morning. And a number of other mid fives and lower fives and a bunch of fours in there as well. I'm sure that there's a bunch more in terms of smaller magnitudes because you got to think there for every four, there should be a certain number of threes and twos and so on. But uh, of course, the USGS not going to show all that quake activity, but I can only assume there that uh, there's probably a lot of significant smaller quakes in there as well. Uh, a little bit of adjustment further down south here. This is a newer earthquake. Um, here in the la uh, earlier this evening, it looks like, um, and is it the most recent one? Not the most recent one, but its location there is a little concerning because it is positioned there down to the south a little bit uh, towards the southern end here of the Curl Kamchatka Trench. Now, a little possibility here that we may see some further large scale movement down along this area. Um, when that 8.8 .8 struck, it ruptured about a 500 kilometer long length up here across the northern end, uh, but not completely. Uh, but this area down south here, I think may, uh, uh, looks like it's wanting to show some migration down there as far as earthquake activity goes. So we do need to watch that. Either way, you know, it's been a, it's been a really bumpy ride out there, I'm sure, for the folks that live near the uh, Kamchatka area. Also some movement there around Tokyo this morning. Earthquake fairly recent off the uh, west coast there of Taiwan. Now let's take a look here at the uh, Japan area. Nankai trough holding steady for now. I don't see any further activity out here. A couple smaller quakes there on the map just to the southwest of the Nan Nankai trough. And the uh, typical crunch zone uh, happening there today around the Indonesia area and the Philippines. New Zealand, uh, not so much going on down there. One inland earthquake in Australia, a little 3.3. Man, that's just a crazy amount of earthquake activity. I, <laughs> I'm going to say it like I've been saying it. Uh, I don't think we're done yet. So hold on. Uh, the west coast there, looks like we got a little swarm out there in Nevada. Also some movement down south here into the Gulf of California. There's a four-pointer showing up on the map. Um, that not being reported here by the USGS, but a little bit further south here, we do have a, a little bit larger event. It does look a little active out here across Southern California right now with a couple earthquakes around the San Andreas Fault and even one right smack dab on the San Andreas Fault. So they've had a lot of rainfall out here. I'm sure you've seen uh, the mudslides and whatnot. Mainly those are up in the mountainous areas, but uh, that water's got to go somewhere. You do got to watch this because... Uh, when it rains, it pours down there in Southern California, and it can lubricate these faults to an extent that could cause rupture. Uh, it may take a couple days, may take a couple months here, but uh, it does seem to elevate earthquake activity following any sufficient rainfall events there in Southern California. And as we know, there's a number of fault systems that are well overdue. Watching my microphone here, someone said that the audio is getting clipped right at, right around the red right there. So I've got to try not to get it into the red zone. Right about yellow is fine. So kind of watching that. Thanks for the heads up there on the uh, audio check. Uh, let's see. The Bay Area pretty quiet. A couple smaller earthquakes here along the creeping section and the park field section here of the San Andreas Fault. Northern California. Got uh, two earthquakes today here, including one deep. This is 20 miles deep here underneath Northern California, and that is associated with the Cascadia subduction zone. The deeper quakes like that is a subduction zone earthquake, and it's right around the Trimmer area, slow slope events uh, region. So let's go see what we have here for Cascadia Trimmer. A little bit down south here. 
uh, but not so much underneath Northern California. That's a pretty sufficient number, though. 329 slow slip events there, mainly underneath Seattle and Olympia area. Those are down there about 20, maybe 25 miles into the subduction zone of the Cascadia, which has been on my list here of uh, areas to watch for sure. Also, Mount St. Helens seen some earthquake activity, and I think this right here uh, is just a fraction of the earthquakes that are happening out there. Let me show you guys real quick. Uh, this is for Mount St. Helens, and we're going to go up here at the summit area. Some of those deep, some of those earthquakes are about four to five miles underneath this area, and they are more than likely happening around the magma chamber. Now, let's go back here and look at. Here's a little point eight that happened about 2.30 in the morning, four miles underneath this region. So it's going to look like a, a distant event because it's basically four miles away from the uh, seismograph station. So let's go look here, 2.30 in the morning. Uh, that's going to be this one right here. That's a little point eight. Notice that it doesn't look like a, a large spike. Those are more localized events. But if there's this one, what about all of these other ones here? And I was just looking at some images there about st helens and there's not a whole lot of snow or ice on that so you can't say that these are ice quakes guarantee you they're not ice quakes so if this is earthquake activity then that means all these other ones look like they're earthquake activity as well and that's a bunch of movement happening a lot of these do look like there's some deeper quakes look at these here in, in the the afternoon time period but if you notice nothing really showing up not a peep or a squeak in terms of that earthquake activity so it, it does look like we got some activity stirring up there across Mount St. Helens. A couple localized shallow events as well. These look like deeper deeper quakes. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know about you, but this looks like it's uh, stirring up there into the deeper areas. Again, about four miles or so. The deepest one, almost five miles earlier this morning. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Nothing showing up on Mount Rainier, but that's, you know, I'm not surprised that they're not showing anything. Uh, let's go over here to the Mount Rainier Seismograph Station and see what we have going on for activity. Yeah, there's a, definitely a couple of earthquakes here this evening, as you can see on the graph. I, uh, those are not all ice quakes. <laughs> Here's a well-defined event last night. A couple uh, decent events out there. Nothing big. These are all very small microquakes and probably some that are so small that they can't even locate in terms of the accuracy of where it may be at and the magnitude level. But there's still earthquake activity occurring. Uh, someone mentioned here about Mount Adams as well. Mount Adams, uh, they just recently installed this seismograph station here. Uh, that's got a little bit of activity on it as well. Not here. This is just um, looks overblown in terms of the amplitude. But these do look like they could be some events out there. Uh, nothing big, not, no swarm like uh, Mount Rainier or Mount St. Helens is seeing, but maybe a little bit of activity out there. So we'll check back on that. But uh, for now, keep an eye there on the Cascadia subduction zone. There's that swarm out in Nevada. Uh, nine earthquakes today of twos and threes. That brings up the total tally here to 143 earthquakes in the last month. That's a pretty decent swarm of activity. And it really didn't start off with a 4.8. If you look here, it started off with a 1.9, and there was just a mixed bag of earthquake activity, including the fours here uh, within that swarm. A little uncertain on where this is leading to, but obviously there are some uh, uh, heated areas down below here, meaning volcanic. But uh, we'll have to see what happens. About seven miles or so, maybe eight miles underneath the area of Nevada for that earthquake activity. Uh, let's see, Yellowstone National Park, a couple earthquakes out there today. Uh, we better go double check that since we got swarms here across a couple different volcanoes. It's good to keep an eye there on Yellowstone as well because it has been known to swarm itself. Not a whole lot going on out there. Those are the upper fives from earlier this morning. Uh, but I don't see a whole lot of localized events here across Yellowstone for now. Just a couple of smaller ones that are noted on the uh, USGS map here. 
Uh, nothing new across the oil fields. Uh, let's take a look here. Someone mentioned uh, about covering the Central America a little bit more. Central America region is, uh, of course, an area located south here of Mexico, roughly in uh, this area right about here. It doesn't, I guess it doesn't uh, include uh, Guatemala area, Costa Rica, Panama region. They do sit at the uh, southern end here of the Middle America Trench, which is capable of producing some big earthquakes. Not a whole lot happening on it right now, but I did pull up historical data here, and you can see the big events around that southern end of the subduction zone. There's some big events over here around Costa Rica as well. The last sizable event here was back in 2001 of a magnitude, well, nope, take that back. That was the largest back in 2001. The most recent was a 7.3 here in 2014. Uh, right there into the uh, Middle America Trench, the southern end. Um, so it does happen. Um, whether we're looking at some newer activity happening here, it's hard to say. Uh, it does look like it has, you know, some time here, about 10 years or so, uh, in between intervals when earthquakes strike. So that would be right about now. <laughs> 2014 was uh, 11 years ago. So, yeah, we could be looking at some activity stirring up out here. I do like to look at it um, here on the globe because it's always active. It's a major subduction zone down there. And, again, they can get some bigger earthquakes. Just for now, we got the typical movement. Uh, same for the Ecuador Trench up here and also the Peru-Chile Trench. Just a typical movement on any given day. There's a little bit of larger activity there with the 5.5 .5, uh, early this morning. But... Uh, there's a little bit of adjustment here. You can kind of follow a line from the Peru Chile Trench all the way up there through the Middle America Trench into the Gulf of California. So I would watch Southern California there. It looks like it's kind of uh, kicking up right now in the last hour. Nothing big. I mean, if you look here on the map, there's really been nothing here above 2.5. All smaller microquake activity out here in the last 24 hours. Uh, another event up there across the Russia area, 4.8. Uh, that was about 20 minutes or so ago. The seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet for now. Uh, the eruption there at Kilauea Volcano has come to an end uh, a few hours ago, actually. So let's go see what we got here real quick across the uh, Kilauea Volcano. I told you guys it would be uh, ending before tonight's update. So episode 33 here uh, can be found here and so on. But uh, all we got to look at here is the deformation data, and that will tell us what's going on. There's our eruption. Now we're going back up. This is the end of the eruption right here. We're already inflating. Um, so in a number of days here, we'll see the return. Although if you look here, this one did not drop as much in terms of the... the um, volume of outflow see look at the last one here though that was way more down here on the chart this one just barely so and we're already going back up so we could look at a uh, maybe another eruption happening sooner than this last one it, it kind of took a little while for that one to build up there maybe because of the major uh depletion event there back in august but all right, let's see what else we got uh, going on here across the globe. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on out there. Same for the Mediterranean and the uh, Middle East. Just got, uh, you know, the Pacific plate out here just taking up the show right now. Star of the show, so to speak. Watch areas around Japan. Remember this middle point boundary. It's just a common sense type of scenario when you get pressurization across the northern and southern area here of the Pacific Plate. The general stress model shows us that the middle point here would definitely be an area where accumulating stress is happening when you get bigger events up north and south here like we've seen here in the last couple days. So Filipino Plate definitely underneath the bullseye spot where we could see some further larger movement here soon. Uh, but also keep uh, keep an eye there on the Crow Cam chat code. That, that, uh, is crazy amount of earthquake activity. All right, um, let's see what else. Nothing major going on there. Let's go check out space weather activity. We had a little surprise M flare earlier today. 
very weak. Nothing big going on. Just a looks like a M. Oh, Kevin's not even covering that. His last post there was a couple. Well, it was it was today. Um, but yeah, there's the M flare. Does look like we may have some aurora activity coming in on the 22nd with the G1 class storm. Um, that is expected from a coronal hole. This one right here, number 80, that's currently facing us. So um, here in a couple days, about 72 hours or so, we'll get the high speed solar wind stream from that coronal hole that could amplify the auroras up to a G1 class storm. So we'll check back on that as we get a little bit closer to that time period. Uh, man, I hope they get those fixed over there in terms of the latest imagery. That's way over a week old. So we got to go with this one. There's a number of sunspots out here. Um, I think that inflare came off of this area. Not 100% certain, but it does look like it's quite complex there with 4220. Um, maybe this one up here as well. There's a bunch of sunspots out here, but they're not all that uh, crazy looking yet. A couple other sunspots out here on the southeastern limb of the sun that's coming around into the Earth-directed view. So, uh, Flare threat probably should stay at the moderate or the minor level for now. I don't see any major uptick in terms of the instability here on the solar flare detection chart. So 35% chance there for an M flare, M flare, X flare around 1% chance there. So uh, aside from that, folks, um, that's about it. Hope everyone had a good Friday. It's a weekend. Just uh, stay safe out there, and we will catch you guys out here for the Saturday morning update. By the way, tomorrow is the 20th, right? What do we do on the 20th of the month? Well, we do our member drawing, so we will be doing uh, that tomorrow afternoon. We'll pick out two lucky winners and uh, go from there. So if you're not a member here on the channel, it's pretty easy to join. You just go to my uh, my YouTube channel there, and it will say uh, join channel. And then you have a couple options there to uh, join. But uh, yeah, if you do, then you'll automatically be entered into the uh, drawing tomorrow. We'll be picking out two winners win some uh, cash prizes there also uh, maybe a you know geology mining kit or some earth master merchandise of your choice so the options are in your uh in on your choice there so to speak and i want to add a couple more i don't i just don't know yet maybe uh if you have any ideas there send me an email earthmastermail at gmail.com uh, kind of looking for new items to add there to the member uh winners new options anyway all right i'm out of here folks um again seismograph station is pretty quiet another earthquake there in russia just a whole lot of energy taking place out here we'll catch you guys out here for the uh, saturday morning update stay safe